here in uh, one of the canals in Eindhoven and we're setting up a installation for Glow Festival. I'm gonna put a flag in there and then uh, and then see what happens. Oh, Alright, keep turning there, man. Hey, welcome to monthly news number 22. So yeah, I take YouTube comments very seriously. There's a lot of good information in there. And um, yeah, this one, I mean, yeah, we need more Charlotte. So Jose, I hear you, especially for you, Charlotte in the background. So I often get the question, yo, yo, bro, what's up with phone blocks? And especially for the occasion, I made a video for it. Uh, also because it's been exactly five years ago uh, last month. So really from how it went from the idea to work Google and where it ended up in the end. So if you haven't seen that, it's in YouTube. And another question I often get is what's up with Project Comp? So we started this project um, to set up their own community. But then this hill stuff kind of came in between. So we won an award, we got this space and we decided to work on Precious Plastic version 4, which is also, uh, I guess, important to work on. <laughs> But uh, because of that, we couldn't really work on Project Comp. However, being here with all these people around, uh, it kind of feels like we're setting up a community already to making sure everyone can do their job, is happy, it all works. Um, you have a few examples of the things we're doing here. Hey, I'm Charlotte. I'm you talking to you about the living in the community here at Precious Plastic. So the working day here starts at 10 a.m. and we serve breakfast from 9 until 10. And when joining version 4, you're put into a cleaning team, which are named after our favourite animals. Uh, I am team cleaning worm, and every Monday we clean up after breakfast, lunch and dinner, and we help prepare breakfast in the morning. So we try and produce as least waste as possible here at uh, version 4. And so everything that comes into the kitchen, we buy in bulk. So that's things like 10 kilograms of dried figs, 5 kilograms of cumin, and 6 kilograms of peanut butter, which we go through each week. And so following this zero waste lifestyle, we actually utilize our food waste into facial and cleaning products. We use our old coffee grounds mixed with baking soda and coconut oil as a face scrub. And it's also a great cleaner for our dirty hands in the workspace. And using uh, old citrus peels, we mix them with vinegar and they make a really good all purpose cleaner. And in our free time when we're not working, we have discussion evenings in the Coliseum which is where we discuss things like food production and the banning of the plastic straw. And we also had a couple of friends from Taiwan visit that gave us free tattoos and free haircuts. Haircut and tattoo. So how long are you there? So we've been setting up this community in here, in this building, um, but we're still wanting to find that piece of land. But it's a bit challenging because there's so much going on for Precious Plastic version 4 um, that, uh, yeah, Project Com got on hold a little bit. But luckily we have Katrina. Hey, hey. And she's actually going to um, make sure the project's going to continue and we're actually going to find that land. Yeah, so we had a wider look into where we could go, but are now focusing on Portugal. And as uh, we are not local there, um, I'm looking into um, finding, getting in touch with people from Portugal, being uh, knowledge about areas there and who can help us. Um, so if you know a project or uh, have an idea um, which could help us or you be, could be helpful, make sure to get in touch with us either in the forums or personally with me. Yes. So our plan is to um visit a few plots uh, this winter, spring, and then we have to get out of this building December next year, so that's also our deadline. So after that, we need to have a piece of land so we can move all our stuff there. So um, yeah, we could use some help. But before we go into uh, Project Comp, we're first gonna finish Fresh Plastic version four. And we've been working on this for like the last three months. It's been an amazing experience, I would say, so far. We've been working very hard. We made a lot of friends and uh, it's been a very learning experience for all of us but uh, we got to a point now where three months in 
most of the people have to have to leave because of uh, their visa is expiring. Stupid visa reasons. So it's very boring uh, reason to sort of break apart people. But uh, anyways, some people have to leave, uh, which leaves us with uh, basically having to reopen the applications uh, for more of you to come down and help us here in, uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands. So we have a few things we're going to work on in the coming months and all the uh, applications will be on next.freshplastic.com but there are a few in particularly important and are going to have a lot of focus. One of them being... Uh. <laughs> yeah, for the past uh, couple of months, meanwhile people were developing machines here in the workspace. Up in the, in the office we've been working more on the digital side of the project. And we're now working on, a, on helping you guys to connect and collaborate locally in a much more efficient and streamlined way. And we are working on a much more powerful platform uh, um, to, to enable you to do this. And so working with Saskia, we've been uh, really thinking it through how we can make it easier for people to, to come together and to collaborate on different projects. So all the user experience side of the project is being nailed down right now. And we come to a point where we need to implement all of these ideas and concepts. Uh, and that is why we're now opening up positions for UI designers, so user interface designers, uh, as well as uh, developers. So we will uh, welcome two more in-house developers to help us uh, translate our ideas and designs into code. And the requirements for, the, for developers are that you, you are able to work on, that you're able to code on JavaScript and are familiar with the React and are willing to learn this new uh, programming language and framework so that you can help us bring our ideas to life. Yes, and I would also add that um, we're developing this tool um, which works for Precious Plastic as a community to develop that people can share back knowledge and collaborate. But we're also going to share that online tool or website we're building, open source online, so everyone can use it for their own open source community projects. Um, so it's going to be a very complex, big project, ambitious project, but also one that could be very powerful for all these projects like Precious Plastic that want to develop stuff together. And as part of the workspace, we're gonna, uh, we could use help with uh, two machines we're going to build, so really uh, engineers and machine builders. One is a bigger version of Extruder Machine. Nate has been working on that. You could see him in last month's monthly news, but he needs to leave. And we could use more people there. Um, because with a bigger extruder, we can make bigger things, bigger beams, bigger blocks, um, and process more plastic at once. So that is a very uh, exciting tool. And the other one is a bigger shredder. So right now our shredder is kind of relatively small. We want to make one more industrial version that is bigger and shreds more plastic. Yeah, yeah. and uh, on a side note, bring some uh, big jackets because in the Netherlands it's very cold and nah. we are in winter. <laughs> So um, now you're going to see a clip about another machine we've been working on. It's a sheet press. So basically we want to make big sheets. And Paul is going to walk you around about all the things and challenges we had, the things we still need to do. Uh, it's a relatively long clip, but also I would say an interesting one if you're into this topic. And at the end you would also have a clip of the GLOW project we did in the beginning about all the plastic in the river and why we did that. Hey guys, it's Paul. This month we're going to be talking to Mark and Vicente about the work that they've been doing developing the sheet press. Let's go check it out. Hey Mark. Hey Paul. We were hoping you could maybe tell us a little bit about the work you've done with the sheet press machine. Yeah, sure. So, uh, well, this is the sheet press area. Uh, over here we have a big pizza oven. Uh, and here we have another uh, machine. It's a plate press. It was built by uh, Jerry. Uh, and Thomas has been uh, working on it to improve the, the quality that it delivers. But already we get uh, quite nice uh, results. Nice. Only some, some problems with the uh, wrinkles. They're coming from this uh, PTFE foil. Uh -huh. When it shrinks, uh, we think that uh, it shrinks with the plastic and uh, creates these uh, wrinkles. And there are heat plates in the press as well, correct? Yeah, so this press has uh, top and bottom uh, heating spirals. Um, and then thick aluminum plates uh, that distribute the heat evenly. And then this uh, PDFE foil uh, is added to make sure that the plastic won't stick to the machine. So one side is really nice and flat and the other side has these, uh, has these wrinkles. Cool. Is um, there a limit to how thick you can make these? Uh, 12 millimeters seems, seems nice and 10. 
18 is already stretching it a little bit uh, and also the the melting time increases uh, a lot when it mm. gets too thick mm. so there might be a limit but we haven't yet found it but uh, efficiency wise um, smaller plates are, are easier cool yeah. you have another press too right yeah there's another press that's uh, we call this the the hot press uh, and then we have here the, the cold press the difference with this press is that this press doesn't have any heating uh, spirals mm -hmm. so for this press we use a mold in which we put plastic granite, put it in the pizza oven, and uh, when everything is melted, we put it in the in this press. And uh, with four hydraulic jacks of each eight tons, we um, press the plastic uh, together in the plate shape, cool. and then it cools in the machine. And uh, benefit of this of this machine is that um, uh, it can cool down the, the plate or the sheet in uh, in less or around an hour. Nice. Um, so that's really fast compared to this machine, which takes um, six hours to cool down. So that's a real nice improvement, yeah. uh, but we're also trying to improve this machine to see if we can um, introduce a mold in the hot press and do the cooling outside of the, the press. So then we can cut down production times. So simultaneously we're doing tests and improvements, improvements on both of these um, presses. And then uh, when we've gathered enough information, uh, we're going to redesign uh, either one of them or make a completely new design. Cool. Um, and combine everything that we learned and uh, see what works best. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Are there any particular challenges you guys have been facing that have been... Well, well for different types of materials, um, the, the um, plastic that stays behind in the mold can be quite tough to remove mm. so we're still looking for the best way to um, uh, to release the, the sheets and and also the, the excess material that stays behind so we're looking for better mold release uh, stuff mm -hmm. um, yeah and one of the biggest challenges I think is um, making the machines um, still accessible to, to build them sure. um, so now we have a lot of steel, you need to do a lot of welding. Um, some parts uh, need to be welded properly because otherwise they break. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're also trying to simplify that. Cool. I saw some samples behind the tent. Yeah. This is the latest sheet that I've pressed with the cold press. Nice. So this is HDPE, has a really nice surface and structurally it's uh, pretty solid. Cool. Um, only thing is that there's still really small um, air pockets at the surface. Inside it's fully solid, but at the surface you see small dimples. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, man. Um, yeah, and then over here we have some more samples. These samples are uh, from the hot press. Okay. The black machine that you saw. So this is a really uh, thick machine that we made. Nice. And this is, uh, I think, about the maximum we can do. Yeah. Are there any plastics in particular that do well with the sheet press over others? Or well, I um, uh, polypropylene has the easiest uh, manufacturing qualities, mm -hmm. so it, uh, it spreads quite easily, it melts easily, uh, and the result mm -hmm. is also quite nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the excess material is easy to remove. Mm -hmm. Um, and HDPE uh, has more trouble, um, there's more trouble of removing the, mm -hmm. the, the excess materials and the overall process is somewhat harder but the result I like, uh, the plate results I like really uh, a lot. Cool. Thanks so much for sharing man. Yeah of I course. Think we're gonna go talk to Vicente and see what he's doing with all these sheets. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Hey Vicente. Hey, hello. Hi Could you uh, show us some of the stuff you've been working on with the plastic sheets? Yeah, sure. So right now um, we are doing mostly PS, HDPE and PP plates. And it's the first time that we are able to work with these sheets. So we are trying to test them. We are trying to find the best cutting methods uh, mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for the sheets. And also different types of joinery. Mm -hmm. if it's, is it possible to weld? Is it possible just to screw on it or just to snap in? Which are the differences between them? Mm -hmm. So what kind of joinery methods have you been experimenting with? 
Yeah, for instance, we have this uh, snapping thing, uh -huh. kind of strong. Yeah. We also work with this uh, tolerance uh, hammering method. And uh, also this, for instance, this snapping one was like really strong one because cool. it's snapping plus uh, working with the tolerance really well, nice. so 90 degrees. Basically what we understood from this material is that uh, PP and HCPE both are really soft and uh, really good materials to work with. HCPE slightly better than PPE to work. Uh, one interesting thing that I can show you right now, for instance, is this method that we are trying to develop, which is called mirror welding, in which we put fire on this part of it, uh -huh. and then we try to melt two plates together uh -huh. by pressing them. And how has that been working? It's been working kind of well so far. There is no line in the middle. We have been cutting these samples, mm -hmm. and we are going to try it and see Cool, so basically what we are trying to do is uh, learning from the material and, uh, and develop the, yeah. till the limit, push to the limit more or less the, the, the sheets yeah. Yeah. and, and recommend that. So what kinds of different things have you been making using these methods? For instance, this is a table that works just with the snap-in uh -huh. and uh, it's kind of strong. If you try to press on it, you won't break it. Uh -huh. But the only problem is, again, it's wobbly. Are there any particular challenges or anything that you've been facing as you've worked on this that have uh, been tough to overcome so far? Basically, every new test, it's, uh, it's uh, something, th there's a failure on it and there's something to learn with it. Mm -hmm. uh, working with the CNC machine uh, ended up being like really good results, but at the end, we had oh, as well to learn how to finish it mm -hmm. uh, again because some parts are melting when you are cutting. Mm. There, there is a problem because if it's too fast, the cutting, um, then it, both parts of the cut melt again, the plastic. Uh -huh. So sometimes it ended up being welded again. So you were trying to cut and nothing happened mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, it's just about trying to find the best uh, blades to work with. Oh man. Yeah, check out the forums to see the further developments and let us know which kind of um, applications would you love to see. Yeah, and same goes for Mark's project, the stuff that he and Jason are working on, all of that progress is in the forums as well. So check out the links below if you'd like to contribute or just send them words of encouragement. Earlier this month, we filled this river with 30,000 plastic bottles. We're about a five minute walk from the V4 workspace. And this year we partnered with GLOW, a local light festival in Eindhoven that every year they put on a light event and there's all these light installations throughout the city. They asked us to uh, help with installing one, kind of focus on the plastic waste issue in society. In this case, these 30,000 plastic bottles, they're approximately the amount that Netherlands uses every 10 minutes and Eindhoven itself just in half a day. So we installed this exhibit, we installed our flag, we had a few lucky volunteers uh, jump in the cold river, and then we cleaned it up after the week was over. And next year we're going to use these bottles to make a new exhibition. We don't know what yet, but if you have any ideas for 30,000 plastic bottles and pretty lights, let us know. We have a year. As the water, the water it's was quite cold, yeah, it's let's say, but cold. when you get warm again, I mean, they feel like... Uh, 
It feels you, nice you have, now. You have yeah. new legs. Yeah. So yeah. that was also, like uh, also new balls. It's re rejuvenated. Right? I don't think <laughs> they, they came back already. Yeah. So yeah. 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 <laughs> after like maybe one day. Still working on that. Gone for the winter. <laughs> Gone mm -hmm. for the winter. Let's go. Okay. Okay. It's done. <laughs>